G'day there, my name's Paul West and I'm down here at Gin and Dairy at GX to teach a couple of masterclasses. I'm gonna be cooking a roasted mushroom and cherry tomato salad with beautiful pan seared thin slices of rump steak. It's a piece of cake to throw together, but it's really big on flavor. It's a great one for the salad people who don't like salad. So, I am here to do some cooking with you lovely folk here today. You know, the term that today's session has been called a masterclass, which I insisted on. It's like, Neva, <laughs> not a demo, a masterclass. Uh, just to give it some more, some more gravity. But I, what, I guess what I want to talk about is the concept of cookery and how to, how to, I guess, approach it in a way that makes sense from a practicality point of view, from a nutritional point of view, and to just kind of strip back some of that expectation that if you're cooking for a family, that you need to be cooking for your family like a chef would cook for a patron. The expectations of a patron, of a paying hospitality establishment, are so much different. I mean, I, I don't know what the expectations of my kids are, uh, or care <laughs> when it comes. I'm like, they're like, I don't like it. I'm like, stiff, stiff, mate. What are you gonna do? Go and like leave a TripAdvisor review for me, eh? You know, what? go on, go on, buddy, get amongst it. I don't care. I don't know what he did. Well, that's dinner. Go to bed hungry. See if I care. You can say that. You can say that to your family. You can't say that to a patron in a restaurant. I don't like this. Well, off. Not that I'd ever say that to my kids. I'd say, well, stiff. So I like to keep things nice and simple, uh, and. We're gonna to do today a, uh, a steak salad or a beef salad. Uh, and I'm just gonna fry the steaks, thinly slice them. Uh, and to serve with it, I'm gonna do some oven roasted field mushrooms and some cherry tomatoes. Uh, and again, really simple stuff. This is, I had the oven preheated to 200 degrees and I just realized that this stuff needs to actually roast for about 20 minutes. So it's probably a good idea that I put it in the oven now. And rather than, you know, in another 20 minutes when it'll be ready too late. So you don't have to be super uh, fussy with that. Little button mushrooms I wouldn't even worry about chopping up, I'd do them whole. Uh, the cherry tomatoes can just go scattered on the top. If they leak, leak a bit of juice onto the mushrooms, all the merrier. So this is, the, again, that kind of one tray cookery stuff, you know. So we'll just do it all in one tray. Don't worry about, like, doing your mushrooms and then doing your tomatoes and doing all those separate bits, anything that you can condense to just one tray of cookery, uh, please do. So that's uh, some time that I've just ripped over the top there. You know, I kept it whole because it'll impart its aroma as it cooks, but you don't need to eat it at the end. So we've got some thinly sliced, or some actually quite thickly sliced field mushrooms, uh, some cherry tomatoes, some thyme, and I give it all a nice big covering and some olive oil. So I like to give that a nice, generous seasoning. Uh, and already, you know, it's already starting to look good. You know, like we, you can tell when, when food uh, is looking good, that's, it's gonna taste good. Uh, so I'm gonna pop that in a 200 degree oven. It's looking good, very happy. Uh, and we're gonna leave it in there for 25, 20, 25 minutes. I feel like we do salads not particularly well in Australia. My grandmother did a lot of cooking for us, my sister and I as kids, because mum and dad ran small businesses. And um, I used to think about like the way she would cook vegetables. Uh, and it would be, you know, like sausages or rissoles in one pan. And then on the other burner of the stove, there would be just like a pot of boiling water. And into that pot would go everything. And usually about 20 minutes before dinner was ready for ages. Just in case, just in case you like, just in case there are any bugs or anything in there. I don't know if like it's an old school like mentality, like maybe there was a brown snake in there that you just wanted to make sure it was boiled up before, uh, or like, I've got no idea. And then you'd wonder why no one will see vegetables. Because when you boil vegetables to within an inch of their life uh, and turn them into like a kind of browny, gray, gloop, indistinguishable mush, um, then it's, uh, it's not exactly appealing because our eyes are a very powerful uh, tool in our digestive system. Uh, and if we look at food and go, ooh, then you naturally kind of 
go anti-digestion. You kind of close down and go into like a fight or flight, like I need to escape this meal. <laughs> Before it tries to eat me, I don't know about it. It could be toxic, it could be like leaching fungal spores into the atmosphere, I better get out of here. Whereas when you see something that is really appealing visually, uh, it actually has the opposite effect in your body. You start to relax, you start to release digestive enzymes, saliva, your body starts excreting hydrochloric acid. It's cool, you came for the cooking, stay for the biology. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Get the whiteboard out. Um, we'll go into some esoteric stuff at the end as well, don't worry. We'll all sit around in a circle and chant um, before eating, before we eat the meat. Well, I don't, that wasn't a joke, I don't know why anyone's laughing. So what I, what I will do though, is I'll, um, I'll cook these steaks and let them have a nice big rest so they're warm uh, rather than kind of hot. So I've got two lovely uh, cuts of rump steak here. And rump to me is like the ultimate, um, one of the ultimate barbecuing cuts uh, because, or just general steak eating cuts because it's, it offers, offers the ultimate balance between texture, uh, affordability and flavour. Uh, because when it comes to the muscles of beef uh, or any, any animal, any flesh that we eat, the more work that they do, the tougher they are in addition to that, the more flavoursome they are. Uh, and then the ones that do the less amount of work, and in, in most animals, there's not a lot of muscles that don't do a lot of work. Uh, so that's why on something like a beef, uh, a beef carcass, where the eye fillet is so tender, because there's just one tiny muscle buried deep in the kind of the, the back musculature that doesn't do much. Uh, whereas like the rump, you know, like a whole rump is like, you know, like this. It's massive. There's a lot of meat on a rum, on a cow, uh, but not so much the eye fillet. But the eye fillet for me, we, we never really deal with it in our family because one, it's really expensive, and two, like, it doesn't, it's too soft. So um, rum for me is, is that really nice sweet spot. You know, usually, I think my butcher does it for about 23, 24 bucks a kilo. So, it's the kind of thing that you can, you can serve uh, to your family relatively economically. And we usually do it like this uh, in that we cook it and serve it as a part of something usually thinly sliced. So nice hot pan. Uh, we want to make sure that that is sizzling up a treat. And I didn't put any oil in that pan because I cooked lamb rumps in there for the last group that came through. And so I just left all that fat in there. So this is steak cooked in lamb fat, which is the ultimate <laughs> in decadence, if you ask me. There we go, got a nice bit of caramelization on there. Oh, ho, ho, yes. So we'll let that rest up on our um, board that has the the grooves for catching that kind of stuff on there. And uh, so for a, a medium rare steak, I would recommend about two to three minutes on each side. Bringing your steaks up to room temperature, that's a great way to make sure that they cook nice and evenly through. Uh, because if you are cooking straight out of the fridge, uh, then the internal temperature takes a lot longer to, to come up to that necessary temperature. Like if you cook your steak, if you like your steaks well done, power to you, I've got nothing against that. Um, but then it doesn't really matter. Like you can cook straight, out of, you can cook straight out of the freezer if you want, because you're gonna be cooking it all the way through anyway. But if you like your meat that little bit rarer in the middle, where, you know, rare, medium rare, even up to medium, it really is essential to try and get your meat to room temperature beforehand for cooking it. Because otherwise it just like you, and you may have experienced this at restaurants before, if you get a rare steak, it's cold in the middle which is not great. You want, it to, you want that to be like blood temperature uh, because it is meat, it's blood, it's good. Um, so resting was the other thing I wanted to talk about with that. And you know, if you've ever served um, meat straight out of the fry pan onto a plate, in particular steak, and then you cut into it, you get blood all over the plate. That's because you kind of, the, the, the liquid hasn't had a chance to find equilibrium back in the fibres of the flesh. So that's what resting allows it to do. It, the, the, the moisture just goes through a natural process of osmosis where it goes back to an equilibrium state in there. And so when you cut it, it's, 
it can handle the amount of moisture that's in there so it doesn't bleed all over the plate. And as a rule of thumb, you want to rest for approximately half the time that you cooked for, as a bare minimum. And so the same goes for like big shoulders and necks and legs and joints like that. So if you roast something for two hours, it's recommended uh, for the best to let it rest for an hour beforehand. Yeah, yeah. What I'm going to do before, while that's still roasting, we will just prepare a little dressing for the salad. And again, it doesn't have to be super complex. In fact, I recommend making it as easy as possible. That said, I don't recommend that you make it so easy that you use a store-bought, like a dressing from a bottle. So um, I just put a massive spoonful of um, that whole, whole grain mustard in there, because I like to add that as a little bit of a base. So at its absolute most basic, a dressing is oil and vinegar. Three parts oil, one part vinegar. Again, rule of thumb. But it's always nice to, uh, you know, we've always got condiments and things floating around in the fridge, so we may as well put them to good use. And our seeded mustard is a really nice one, especially when it comes to red meat and mushrooms and things like that. It's a, it's a lovely compliment. And then a little bit of red wine vinegar. Give that a bit of a stir. Now, I'm gonna put a little bit of salt in here. Ugh. Oh, too much vinegar. No, it's good. It's exactly what I want. <laughs> Just, that was something that came from having to learn to be a TV presenter as well as someone, that you need to like be very conscious of the facial expressions that you pull. <laughs> Uh, when you're tasting things, because obviously people can't taste and smell when they're watching at home, so you know, you gotta be like, mmm. But if you like, okay, yeah. So I used to like love bunging that on just to wind up the director, I'd be like, how's this one, Jimmy? <laughs> Ugh. Yeah. So let's have a look here. We're, well, yeah, we're actually pretty close. Our veggies are done. Uh, you can see that they've all wilted up, the tomatoes have blistered, cracked a little bit. Uh, we can just take any of that time off. It's done its job, thank you Hardy Herb. And then just as a, the base for this salad, uh, we've got two different types of greens here. We've got a, a cress and a rocket, which are really closely related. They're all in the Brassica family uh, and they both have that classic like peppery leaf um, you know, flavour, and that's exactly what I want, especially when it comes to red meat, like that, that pepperiness of brassica base leaves, of which rocket and cress both are, um, stands up really well to that, that red meat. There we go. Um, so, some of these on. And see, so this is this kind of thing I would usually serve out on just one big serving plate. And then we'll carve our steak. So we'll just slice that up. Looking good. Oh, yes. Very good. Uh, I'll run out of room on the board, so I'll start serving these up. It's not as visually spectacular as this could be um, when you serve it like this. Uh, but if you were to serve this out on a big serving platter, it'd look really so there is a really, really nice, simple salad. Uh, and that's, that's a salad that you'll get people that go, oh, I don't need salad. They'll eat that. <laughs> Mainly because there's steak in there. And if you like the look of what you saw there, all the recipes are going to be available on the website. So jump on, download it, have a look, and try it at home yourself.